Hey guys, I just wanted to go over real quick how to handle your own Pint X battery prevention, battery destroying prevention, whatever it is, but you're going to wind up taking your whole Pint X apart. So you're going to see me do that here in fast motion. If you guys are having any trouble taking anything apart, definitely don't force it. It's not one of those things that needs to happen and you don't want to break a bunch of stuff trying to get into the thing that's going to break. So we are going to just take the whole board apart right here. And the main reason that you're going to do all this stuff is because you don't want the battery balance leads to go bad. So that has been a problem on 100% of Pint X's, and we are going to take care of that today. So I do the removal of one whole single side of a rail uh, and then the motor out of the middle of that, just on all of the Pint models, whether it's the Pint, the Pint X, or even the GT, which is basically just a large pint. Um, I go ahead and take the, the whole single rail off because there's no room underneath in that little compartment to move that cable around very well. And if you destroy that cable or ruin any of the pins on your controller side, you are screwed. So the best thing to do is to kind of just take the tire off because then you have enough room to work. And all you've got to do is take the other rail off. So it's a lot easier, in my opinion. It's a couple extra steps. But it's a lot easier to put the cable back in at the end of it. I came up with that one in like 2020 or 2019. I can't remember when that was. You want to take a tire spoon to the rear bumper on a Pint X because sometimes they can feel like they're glued in there and you need to get underneath there to get to the uh, battery lid screws. So I'll take just a tire spoon or a screwdriver or something, wedge it in the back and just kind of work it out so that you can get that bumper out without having to fight against all the dirt and debris that gets stuck in there. Um, guys, kind of more things that I'm not a huge fan of on the Pint X, but it is what it is. And it is a fun little platform to ride on for sure. So then you're going to take out all your security bolts. Those are Torx security 520s. So that is the 20 size bit. That is the Torx security five. Most of them are security six. Uh, I keep a little poker around just cause dirt and debris gets in those things, but once you pry your lid off, and I have to because I have silicone all around the outside of it, uh, there is the battery. Hooray, battery. And so, you know, you want to visually inspect, make sure water didn't get in there. I actually waterproof the back of the charge ports because I have seen water get in there before. I waterproof the inside of the, the gland housing there because, again, I've seen water come in there before. Um, I've seen water come in just about every single place on a one-wheel pint. XR or whatever. And so here's the battery that is in question. You're going to unplug the large white balance lead first, and then the main battery lead XT60 second, and then we can pull that battery straight out of that tray right there, or the BMS first. Be real careful. You don't want to do any physical damage trying to prevent physical damage. <laughs> so this is the problem. Uh, it is a really poorly designed battery housing. Uh, I'm not really sure why that is, that on installation of every single one, and mine's not even that bad, um, every single one, where the balance lead comes out of the battery and where it sits in the battery housing, it's almost non-preventable. It has to be completely redesigned, or the housing has to be modified for it to sit in there to a point where it's not going to put so much pressure on your balance leads that it eventually frays them off. Now, if the only thing you do is ride your board you know, from your car where you got to park it at work to inside to the where you work, and that's as far as it goes, then maybe you don't experience this. But if you're trying to do drops, do tricks, or do anything else like this, I bet you that your board wore down faster than it needed to. And so you can kind of see here when I look at the old pint tray, how they basically just took the same design and they made it deeper. So, you know, there might be a case for them to say they didn't understand, but why did they move that balance lead then from that pint? You can see on top to the bottom of the Pine X, right? So we took the balance lead from the side there to the bottom of the new battery. And then we expected that to go around the corner of that deeper dish better. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. So I just assume Future Motion did this on purpose uh, because it's a pretty easy way for them to have the board malfunction and have to go back to them, especially because of the Pine X we weren't allowed to get into very much. So when you try to put a Pint battery in a Pine X box, you can see like... Um, there had to be some reworking done at the factory. So we know that there was a little bit, at least a forethought into how this was going to all work out. 
So what we got to do is we got to just remove all that material out of there. So we're going to move all of the balance leads out of the way and we're going to expose that corner. We're going to make sure all of those cables are tucked up out of the way because I'm going to grind down that whole corner with this Dremel here. And some of this gets sped up and all that other stuff so that you can kind of see it better. But you can see I'm just working the Dremel around that corner. I'm going to remove that one side of the wall and I'm going to work around the corner just to take that bite and that edge out of there uh, all the way with the Dremel tool. Um, I have a sanding grinding disc on there. It's for metal. The plastic on these things is so hard. That's what I'd recommend using. Uh, that way you're not worried about the, the bit breaking off and hitting you in the face or something. I should be wearing safety glasses. I do know. I have that little poker tool there to just help start to deburr all of that little areas around there and make sure none of that melted plastic is sharp and can stick into a battery end or into a battery lead because the last thing I want to do is make more problems trying to fix a problem. So after that's all well and good, I'm going to blow it out with a compressor. Again, you want to make sure blow it out with the compressor because you don't want little pieces of plastic all in there. Um, you got to check for some afterwards. Now you're going to take some foam and like you have some foam sitting around from your badger job. Take that foam, take that little piece, okay? And you're going to take that end and you're going to play it right down around the corner where you just dremeled and you're going to cover all of that area that has shaved plastic on it. Uh, alternately speaking, you're going to take the thinner gasket or another piece of the thick gasket. And what we want to do is cover up from where the battery, where the, you see the blue shrink wrap. And you want to put at least one strip down over the balance leads because, again, I don't want to rest my balance lead safety on one piece of foam that I put on the battery box because if that piece on the battery box fails, well, then we have the redundant foam on the balance leads to carry us through until the next time that we can get in there and make sure that that's all working properly because a vibration forces anything can move around. So I would be as redundant as I could. I wouldn't do too much. Like you don't have to get crazy with this, but I would definitely put some foam on the balance lead so that when they're in there, it's not just um, balance lead rubbing on foam. It's actually just foam rubbing on foam, which is a lot better for the balance leads uh, against the tray. So then you go ahead and put it all back in there. Uh, we're going to put the BMS back in there. I put all the balance, I put all the leads in from the board first. That way, all I have to remember is put the yellow in first, put the white in last. And after I've done that, I'm pretty much good to go. The, you are going to close that all back up, put all the screws back in where they're supposed to go. And you are now much better protected than you used to be in your Pine X. And that's pretty much it. I hope that everybody got a little bit out of this. And good luck in fixing your Pine X. If you don't think you can do it yourself, bring it to me.